Welcome to Angling Buzz presented by Fleet Farm. I'm Troy Linder. Now it's the third week of June. Fishing is fantastic across the entire Angling Buzz region. Uh, the fish are done spawning. They're moving into their summer patterns. They're hungry. They're looking to eat. And this is where finding forage is very key. You find the forage, you find the food, you find the fish. On today's show, we're focusing on muskie, who are without question the top of the line apex predator in the waters that they inhabit. This episode, we're joined by guide Josh Borowski. He guides up on Lake Vermilion as well as some lakes around the Twin Cities area. So Josh, how has the season been developing so far? Well, we started off with a warm opener this year. Uh, warm spring uh, opening day was June 5th. And uh, on the metro area lakes, the water was already warm enough where I was able to find fish suspending out in the middle of the lake. Uh, if you were someplace further north like Lake Vermilion, you probably still found some fish near or adjacent to spawning areas. But uh, even further north, uh, you know, now that I'm on Vermilion, uh, those fish have also followed suit and, and, and um, transitioned out to the open water to feed on the tulipy schools that are riding really high in the water column this time of year. Okay, so if you had to identify key areas to find muskie right now, what would they be? Well, what I'm gonna be looking for right now is obviously we're out in the open water. A lot of this bite centers around that mayfly hatch. So I'm gonna visually be looking for mayfly carcasses on the surface as I'm driving from spot to spot, especially in the morning, you'll see a lot of them. And then in the evening, you know, you'll see them popping up everywhere as well. Uh, also, I'm gonna be watching for, uh, for birds. So uh, seagulls, ospreys, bald eagles, especially if they're up in the, in the, in the air hovering, that's gonna tip me off to possibly areas where those hatches are happening or, or where there's suspended bait fish riding high, which is usually gonna equal muskies as well. And then the other thing I wanna tell you about, a little shortcut to like finding good areas out there is keying in on hard to soft bottom transitions. And the auto chart live feature on the hummingbird graphs is something that's really kind of changed my world. Uh, as far as making it a lot easier to find those areas, you can go into your settings and actually uh, you know, build a custom map of the lake that auto populates as you're driving around and it color codes it by bottom composition. And it's really turned me on to uh, you know, some new areas that are not being heavily pressured by other people. Uh, and, and I just didn't realize they were there until I drove over uh, them from one spot to another. Well, it's been pretty amazing in recent years, the advancements in marine electronics how we find and catch fish. Now, when we're talking about muskie, a fish that have been known to be very difficult, not only to find, but to catch. What are your thoughts on this? Well, electronics are definitely changing, you know, the way I fish. Uh, I already mentioned the auto chart live feature. That's really been a game changer. And then, you know, the other thing that's just really changing a lot is when we're out there fishing in the open water, um, we, can use, we can now use side imaging. You know, you can be looking, you know, 100 plus feet to either side of the boat and actually identify, yep, that's a muskie over there. I can scroll my cursor over and actually put a waypoint right on the muskie where it's sitting and then, you know, circle it. And then that allows us to play with cast angles and presentations as well. And if you have live viewing sonar, you can take it a step further and you can actually see how the fish is responding to your presentations real time, which is just crazy. Yes, the advancements in marine electronics has been truly amazing and this goes for finding and catching muskie as well. Now muskie, they're, they're notoriously known to be tough to catch and find fish at 10,000 casts. Now, what are your thoughts on this? Well, yes, muskies are definitely challenging to catch. There's always less of them than anything else, right? Just remember muskies are a fish of change. So um, anytime anything changes, sun goes up, the sun goes down, moon goes up, moon goes down, the wind dies down, the wind picks up, it starts raining, stops raining, starts snowing, stops snowing. Those, that's pretty much the list, right? But anytime conditions change uh, or something changes, usually the attitude of the fish changes too. And sometimes it's for the better and sometimes it's for the worse. And, and what I do is anytime conditions do change, if I've already located fish that day, I'm definitely gonna immediately run back to them and see if their attitude has changed for the better of the, or the worse and kind of use that as a barometer to tell me which one of those things it is. When you find an area that's holding a muskie, do you believe that there's more than one fish on that spot? Yeah, well, you know, I think muskies are kind of like people, right? Some people are loners and some people like to, you know, are more social, and like to, to be in groups. Uh, I think definitely with the leech lake strain of muskie, they tend to pack up uh, even more so than the other uh, genetic strains of muskies in, in my experience. 
Uh, and the other thing it might depend on a little bit is the, uh, the size of the spot. Uh, if you have a relatively small spot that might end up being a, you know, a spot that's only holding one fish, um, but, but on larger, more dynamic uh, spots or complexes, uh, for sure there could be a, a rather large pack of fish at times working those. And, and even on this open water bite that we're on now, sometimes I'll find three to seven fish uh, you know, in a relatively small area out in the middle of, of nowhere, right? And, and, and definitely when I see that, I'm gonna be excited and probably not gonna go anywhere for a while. Well, thank you, Josh, for your insights and your time today. Well, stay with us after the short commercial break. We have our highlight destination feature as Angling Buzz continues. Customer first, that's their mission at Dondelinger Auto. It's not just about the sale, it's about giving you peace of mind for as long as you own that vehicle. Dondelinger is home to the lifetime powertrain warranty for new and pre-owned vehicles, plus 10 years of roadside assistance. They have an incredible variety of the most popular vehicles and offer pickup and drop off for service. Stop in to experience the Dondelinger difference today. In 2020, Minnesota watercraft inspectors found that 97% of boaters were doing their best to prevent the spread of aquatic invasive species. In short, drain plugs were removed, no standing water was inside the boat, and no zebra mussels or plants were found on the boat or trailer. Thanks for following these simple habit-forming rules. Clean aquatic plants and animals from boats, trailers, and equipment. Drain all water from motors and live wells. Remove all boat plugs and dispose of unused bait in the trash. Like many of you, I've had back issues. From the pounding waves of Lake Erie. To over 30 years of competitive angling. And a lifetime on the water, but not anymore. Smooth moves change the game. It's a must have for me and my clients. It's like my boat is floating on air. They're easy to install. Fully adjustable. It makes a day on the water a whole lot more comfortable. Smooth your ride with smooth moves. Tired of doing this? Oh, yeah. Get a can of this and spend more time doing this. No one. Yeah. Whoa. Marine Pro Fuel Treatment helps marine engines start easier, run smoother, and last longer. Seafoam! Marine Pro, new from the makers of Seafoam. Marine Pro is a complete marine fuel system treatment. Just pour it in. Fast starts and smooth running power have never been this easy. Available now at Fleet Farm. Welcome back to Angling Buzz. Up next, it's our highlight destination feature, and we're going to Leech Lake. You know, the 1950s, there was a famous musky rampage. The lake has changed a little bit since then. Technology, pressure. Let me tell you how I break down Leech Lake. I'm Toby Kavalivak, Leisure Outdoor Adventures fishing guide and aspiring musky fisherman. Tell you what, we put a lot of muskies in the boat the last couple years. And let me go about breaking down the lake for you to tell you how I go about the system. So right away in the year, those muskies are spawning. As soon as they're spawning, they come out, they start feeding. They're still shallow. In shallow water, those shallow water bucktails, those smaller blade bucktails, maybe some of the smaller beaver baits, small crankbaits twitching them slow through those schools of bait fish, perch, walleyes. We're talking early, so right around musky opener a few weeks later, those fish are still shallow, a great place to start. Soon after, those fish start to push out deeper. And in some of the deeper bays, in Cavacona Bay and Walker Bay, the main lake base, and some of those deeper water spots, you'll find schools and schools of muskies that'll push out there. Those muskies can be had finding the bait through side imaging technology, casting baits, artificial baits, like paddle tails and some crank baits. Some guys like to troll, and that's okay too. Right through those schools of Wissiscos and tulipies, catch lots of muskies by the end of June into July. And then the water warms up, there's a big shallow push of fish, and that's what everybody's been waiting for. So we're talking mid-July now into August, 
And those weedy bays like Portage and Sucker and Steamboat Bay, those, those weeds that have been established and are green are full of life from the spawn from all the other species. So those fish are going up there and they're chowing. And now oh, it's traditional it. stuff. Oh. Now we're using our bucktails. And now we're using paddle tails. And now we're using topwaters and twitch baits and big rubber baits all through those weeds or maybe on the rocks by August. The shallow water rocks. When there's wind on Leech Lake, those shallow water rocks load up with muskies. And let me tell you, they like to eat. And then the water starts to cool. So what happens then? Then there's a sand bite. The lake, main lake, is surrounded by sand. You have over by Bear Island, the south end, up in Portage Bay, all the way into Walker Bay and the Walker Narrows. Lots and lots of sand. And when that water first gets cold, those muskies like to go up there and just kind of chill and hang out. It's been a warm summer digesting food. Shallow water muskies, stay away from them. Again, we're throwing bucktails and top water and twitch baits, you your go. favorite bait through the shallow sand. And then it's fall season. Fall season, what happens? The water temperature drops, things slow down. Now it's time to get the big, big rubber baits. Your bulldogs and medusas, Svartsonker, McRubber. Nice one. Those big rubber baits, that's when they shine. Find those steep breaks like in Walker Bay the main lake with the ciscos and tulipies spawn, you're gonna find muskies. And that's the full cycle, that's the year of muskie on Leech Lake. It's not the 50s anymore where they catch 165 muskies in a weekend. Well, actually, they probably do. There's that many good fishermen out there. Leech Lake is a great destination. I hope to see you up there. Well, Leech Lake is a fish factory, and especially for big muskie. Each season, I usually take at least two or three trips up there to chase these big predators. Well, stay with us after this commercial break. We have our Buzz Bite reports as Angling Buzz continues. That's not just a bass, that's a pig. That's not just a snook, that's a donkey. That's not just a smallie, that's a toad, dude. Introducing Suffix Advanced Fluorocarbon. It's not just another fluoro, it's a whole new category of fluorocarbon. Hello, future. Simple, fast, and easy. This automatic launching and loading system on BoatToTrailer.com makes unloading and loading your boat a breeze on both roller or bunk trailer configurations. This system is a simple one bolt install. No more hanging over the boat, no more cranking in the boat, and no more wet feet. Speed your boat ramp time by visiting BoatToTrailer.com. Looking for the perfect fishing vacation? Leech Lake, Minnesota. There's over 112,000 acres of water to explore with fantastic walleye, bass, pike, panfish, and trophy muskies. The fishing opportunities are endless. Leech Lake has it all with over 30 resorts, lodges, campgrounds, and hotels line its pristine shores. Plan your trip. It's Minnesota's original up north vacation destination. Want to save even more at Fleet Farm? Well, now you can with Fleet Rewards. It's free to sign up and there's no credit card required. Using Fleet Rewards is easy. Earn points every time you shop. Plus, get exclusive member offers, birthday and anniversary perks, free tire rotations, and more. Download the Fleet Farm app or create an account at fleetfarm.com rewards to start earning points today. Fleet Farm, proudly serving the Midwest since 1955. Welcome back to Angling Buzz. It's time for this week's Buzz Bite Reports. To kick it off, we're gonna join Caleb Wistad in northern Wisconsin. How's it going, guys? We just got off the water. We had a blast catching a few of the last bluegills on beds today. I had the kid out there and the fam, and we had a good time catching gills. Um, that being said, the heat has jump-started all the fishing into basically summertime patterns. So. Most of the fish, even the gills, have finished up spawning now. There's a few big lakes where they're still on beds. As far as bass go, they're done. Um, they're starting to be more post-spawn patterns. Walleyes are starting to move towards those deeper structures now. 
away from the shallows. Um, so it's it's just jump started summer like I've never seen before. Uh, we're talking water temps in the mid 80s in some places this week. So I think from now on looking forward, you're gonna be looking for fish to generally be transitioning deeper. You know, walleyes this time of year, you're typically talking switching from minnow style baits over to more bug style baits. So that would be night crawlers, leeches on slip bobbers. Uh, and then reaction bites like the jigging wrap bite, that should be heating up here pretty soon. It's a very, very early summer. Uh, panfish, you know, it's gonna be a weed bed bite for the most part here for a while. The crappies are gonna be on those edges of the weeds. The bluegills are gonna be in the weeds typically. That's kind of where we're at right now. Hopefully we get the water temps to cool down a little bit, but uh, hopefully you guys can get out this week and enjoy the nice weather and get hooked up. Now let's head over to Leech Lake with the Leisure Outdoor Boys. Finally, we've seen some uh, stabilizing water temps that have seen these fish set up on just a little bit more predictable patterns. You know, those up and down water temps that we saw late May, even early June, really made it tough to stay on top of the fish. You had to have a lot of tools in your toolbox to make sure you were ready for what happened day to day. What happened yesterday wasn't gonna hold true necessarily the next day. So we've kind of seen that stabilization. It's really helped, you know, traditional patterns such as Lindy rig fishing with leeches or crawlers have been effective and also spinner fishing. We've got the crayfish molting, we've got the uh, mayfly hatch in full swing and so those fish are ready to eat and they're ready to chase a little bit. Again, that those warmer temps have got them in the mood, got them on the prowl. The other thing you never want to overlook this time of year, the jig rep. I'll fish this kind of like I do slip bobbers. When I'm working the shallows, I'm gonna be driving using my side imaging, and I'm gonna to pitch to these fish and work the jig wrap back in kind of an erratic patch pattern. If I need to, and I need to go a little bit deeper, 20 to 25 feet, I'm still going to try and mark them with my sonar, move off that structure, and then pitch back to it. So get out there, make a memory, be safe everyone. Now let's head up to Lake Vermilion with Billy Rosner with a couple of clients today and we're targeting northern pike and uh, John just caught this nice one here uh, we caught it you can see it's still hooked up we got it on a number four blue fox inline I cut the treble off and there's like a two watt VMC hook with a four inch kaolin grub fish is weedless great great bait uh, northern pike are one of my favorite fish to eat and uh, you can check out anglingbuzz.com there's a lot of tips and ways to flay them. This one's under 30, so I think we're gonna keep this one and flay it out for them tonight. Uh, fishing cabbage patches, that four to six feet, doing Terminator spinner baits, like the half ounce is working really well. A little tip for you on the spinner baits, if you use willow blades, you just it seems like you get hit more, a little more vibration than using the Colorado blades also. Uh, spoon, same thing, that Blue Fox strobe spoon, Cut the treble off, put that VMC two odd hook on there with a four inch kaolin grub. And that stuff, this fish is weedless and you're gonna get into some good pike action. Have a great week and we'll talk to you next time. That wraps up this week's Buzz Bite Reports. Now don't go anywhere, after the short break, we still have cool products and technique of the week as angling buzz continues. Like many of you, I've had back issues. From the pounding waves of Lake Erie. To over 30 years of competitive angling. And a lifetime on the water, but not anymore. Smooth moves change the game. It's a must have for me and my clients. It's like my boat is floating on air. They're easy to install. Fully adjustable. It makes a day on the water a whole lot more comfortable. Smooth your ride with smooth moves. Lake Vermilion. Explore. Relax. Reconnect. Minnesota's most beautiful lake. Oh. Get hooked on our trophy wallet. That's a beauty. Bass. This is my favorite fish. Musky fish. That's a beauty there. Things to do, you'll never get bored. Rooms with a view, we got them. Lake Vermilion. Four seasons of fun.
Northland tackles in the premium hardbait game with the Rumble Crankbait Series. Available in 15 custom artisan colors. All Northland Rumble Series baits are handmade with a unique heat compression molding process that ensures unmatched durability and baits that run true on the troll and cast farther than the competition. You'll discover that walleyes and other species find their unique role in actions simply irresistible. You're gonna wanna up your game with these new cranks. Fishing is definitely better with balsa. And now it's time for our cool products brought to you by Fleet Farm. We're gonna start out with the Rumble Bee Series from Northland Tackle. A couple different size options available. This is great for trolling. And you can see the lip is built into, it has this lip locking uh, technology that they have built into the bait. So you have a very strong, durable bait for big fish. This thing is perfect for trolling. Some great musky colors on here. And again, a couple different size options available. And next from Musky Mayhem Tackle, the Rabbit Squirrel. As you can see, this is a nice sort of compact design for an inline spinner. And it has kind of thin squirrel hair on there. And sometimes, you know, too much hair can be too much for the fish. They want something a little bit more subtle. This is a single blade here. There's some different color designs and a couple different blade options as well from Musky Mayhem Tackle, the Rabbit Squirrel. And next from Suic, the Thriller High. This is the nine inch model. This is a dive and rise bait. This is made of high impact plastic. So it's very, very durable. And then the through wire construction inside the bait. Again, this is a dive and rise bait. So it digs down and then it rises and floats back up and musky cannot resist this. And next from Storm, the Arashi Swimmer. I've used this for pike and bass. This is a great design. This is a real, real fish catcher with great action, the Arashi Swimmer. And next from Rapla, the Super Shad Wrap. This is a relatively compact design. This is a floating bait. You can cast this, you control this when you're casting and fishing, almost like a jerk bait. And many times they like this, like I was talking about earlier with the rabbit squirrel, they like a downsized bait, the Rapala Super Shad Wrap. And next, the Bait Rigs Whale Tail. This is basically a super sized swimming grub. You can fish this like a jerk bait. Very, very durable, strong hooks on your very durable plastic. And if you're fishing pressured muskies, this would be something to show them a little bit different. The Bait Rigs Whale Tail. And for fishing line, this is Suffolk's Pro Mix Braid. This is the 40 pound, uh, 40 pound version of it, but they do make you know 80 and 100 pound, and that's what I would recommend if you are musky fishing. And this has excellent color retention. So this line, like this low vis green, is not gonna fade over time. Great castability, great durability, Suffolk's Pro Mix Braid. And next from Daiwa, the Pro Rex TWS, 400. This was designed by Daiwa for throwing big baits and catching big fish. It's a 400 size reel, but it's almost like a 300. When you, when you hold it, it's almost like a compact 300 size. It has a great big power handle for winching in big fish, great line capacity. It has the TWS system on here for both bringing the line off and onto your reel smoothly and effectively. This is a new series from Daiwa made for big baits and big fish, the Pro Rex TWS 400. And St. Croix has a fantastic series for musky rods. You know, musky rods can get pretty expensive, but St. Croix has a nice affordable series in their Mojo musky line. This happens to be an eight foot medium heavy power, fast action rod. This would be a great all around you know, Rod, if you wanted to pick out one to match with something like this Pro Rex reel, these would pair very well. It has a nice wind grip on here, a nice deep uh, butt to this to be able to tuck it in and set on big fish. But definitely stop by your local Fleet Farm store and you'll see a lot more options in the Mojo Musky line from St. Croix. And lastly, to my right here, this is the Big Tooth Colossus Net from Clam. Okay, I'm gonna lift this up right here. You can see how deep the hoop is on here. This can handle a very, very large fish. It's rubber coated to help protect the fish and the handle here. You have a quick extension handle that locks in easily. It also extends out. It has a ruler engraved on here, a strong yoke system. And this is made for big fish like musky. This is perfect to have the fish over the side of the boat as you're working with the fish, removing the hooks before you uh, lift it up for a photo and then release it back into the water. From Clam, the Big Tooth Colossus Net. 
Be sure to shop online at FleetFarm.com and stop our local Fleet Farm store. And right now it's time for our Technique of the Week. Hey guys, Doug Wagner here. Um, we're going to go through a couple baits, or at least my top five musky baits that you need to have in the boat. If you guys are getting into musky fishing, it's obviously a very expensive sport. Um, but there's a few baits I have here that you guys should really invest in. Um, and it kind of covers everything throughout the whole musky fishing spectrum. First off, and I think everyone in the musky world will talk about this bait first, is a bucktail, okay? Um, this particular style, I personally like the best, is musky frenzy. This bait allows you uh, to run two different kinds of blades. It's a one-piece clevis, so one blade always drives the other. It starts, starts up really nice. Musky frenzy, IC9, or in, in, actually, in reality, any of their baits um, are incredibly special with this one-piece clevis design. Second off um, is a bait that kind of has come around in the last few years and that's the beaver okay and this is your pull pause style bait okay this bait is going to sink on the fall um, but it's got these three pieces here that really articulate really nice in the water it's got a really nice big tail um, and it has a screw in weight system so you can change the different weights in here depending if you want to fish shallower or deeper the one thing i do add to this bait for modification is a front hook i've had them actually where they hit the head of the bait and you actually don't get hooks in them so i like to run a steel leader with this as well as adding this front hook, you catch a lot of fish on this hook and you generate a lot more bites getting into the net. Top water is probably the most exciting way to catch muskies. Um, tail baits are super effective. And when I say a tail bait, it's just a single prop here in the back. This is gonna spin while you pull this bait through the water. I really like this one in particular. Um, it's just been really good to me over the years. Top water is some of the most exciting bites you can have muskie fishing. Um, and it's super, super effective in shallow cover. Um, and then also even late in the year as well. Dive and Rise is a bait like this suet here that has just been around forever. And it's such a good technique um, to getting these muskies that don't always want to come out. They're not super aggressive. You get that slow death rise in the bait, you pull it down. It's a really more, you know, way to pick apart a spot. If you're picking apart a weed bed or a rock bar or even sand, um, it's just a really nice action to lure. Suics like this have been around forever. They will catch fish until the end of time. And the last bait I want to talk about um, is some kind of trolling lure or some kind of crankbait. Um, crankbaits are obviously also very good. This one is more specifically just for trolling. This is a blue water bait, nine inch herring. Um, and trolling is just a super effective way to cover ground, maybe dissect a new lake and pick apart where these muskies might be hiding. But if I had to pick five lures that I could start with, um, these would definitely be my five. And hopefully you guys can get some out time out in the water. But Doug always has great information. If you follow him online, you can see from his Instagram page, lots and lots of big fish there. Giant muskies the entire season. Well, be sure to check us out online at anglingbuzz.com for more in-depth buzz bite reports, articles, and videos to help you catch more fish this season. Now, next week's show, we're shifting gears from big top apex predators like muskie to summertime panfish. And as always, we want to remind you to help stop the spread of aquatic invasive species. Anytime you're leaving any body of water, remember, clean, drain, dry. And be sure to enter our sweepstakes online for a great weekend up on Lake Vermilion. That's a big fish factory, bass, walleye, and muskie. Uh, you can win a two-night, three-day stay up at a fantastic resort there. Also, $500 gift card for Fleet Farm, $500 Rapala Tackle Pack as well. Well, thank you for joining us this week. I'm Troy Linder, and we'll see you next time.